Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. This is your Boarhood Naily friend, Oxhorn, and here I am today to talk about the Tribute Chest. After I created my video all about Raider Settlements, the new Raider Outposts that you can found thanks to the Nuka World DLC, I've been getting a lot of questions about the Tribute Chest. How do they work? How long do I have to wait before I can get a Legendary item? What's the chance of getting a Legendary item? Lots of great questions like that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today I cracked open the CK, the creation kit, and I took a look at some of the scripts that came with Nuka World. In particular, the tribute chest script.psc, right here. By the way, just to show off exactly how geeky the developers of this game are, they actually have this line at the top of the script for the tribute chest. This is not the greatest chest in the world. Oh no, this is just a tribute. Yes, looks like we have a few Tenacious D fans on the development staff at Bethesda, which I think is just pretty great. Anyway, so, first question. How many days must one wait before you get a spawn at your tribute chest? And that question is answered right here. Float. Property, days between item spawn equal 5. This is how many days must pass before items will spawn here. So... Check your tribute chests every five days. This next line is really interesting. The max inventory value of the tribute chest is 1,000. The note says that if the contents of the chest are greater or equal to 1,000, then don't spawn anything new here. This means that you need to loot the tribute chest as soon as the items appear so that more items will spawn five days later. What's also interesting about this is the greater than or equal to. So, it seems that if you loot some of the items, but not all of them, that the next time it respawns, the chest will only replace the items that you looted and leave the stuff that you left. So let's see if the five days are accurate. Let's go ahead and build a tribute chest here because this settlement does not have one yet. Let's assign somebody. Now, before we can test this, we actually have to lead, uh, leave this settlement cell so that the workshop script has a chance to register the fact that this chest is here. So let's actually wait five days outside of this settlement. Let's go to home plate. Okay, now let's uh, get out of our power armor first and sleep. Uh, so I won't make you wait the entire five days with me, but it's... 131288, and I'll just go through five days. And there's the fifth day, 252288. All right. Great. Now let's go see if those uh, chests have refilled themselves. Aha. And here we go. Interesting that it says that the tribute chest cannot have a value beyond 1,000. So we've got a weapon that has a value of 234. The armor has 67. So, well, here, let's just add it up. 234 plus 67 plus 67. We're already at 368. 50. All right, so 50 times 4 plus 40 and then 8. That brings us to 616 plus 36. 652 plus 3, 2, and 8 times 3. That's 681. And then 2 times 14, which is 28, equals 709. So this tribute chest does not have exactly 1,000, but this character of mine has one charisma. Plus 2 with the gear that I'm wearing. And charisma negatively, low charisma negatively affects. Uh, buying and selling prices and the value of items. So my bet here is that the value of the items in this tribute chest does all equal a thousand before the value is offset by your charisma level. So if my high charisma character were to look at this exact same tribute chest, I'm sure the contents would be worth much more than 1,000 caps. Now, here's the part that we've all been waiting for. Legendary items. What is the chance that you get a legendary item from a tribute chest? Well, it tells us right here. 
Property legendary item chance equals five. There's a 5% chance that every time you check your tribute chest, you get a legendary item. And tragically, there's also a timer once you loot the item. Minimum days between legendary items equals 30. How many days must elapse before spawning another legendary item? So once you loot a legendary item, you actually have to wait 30 in-game days before another one has a 5% chance to spawn. Now, of course, the best way to farm legendary items using tribute chests is to have a tribute chest at every single raider settlement. If all of the settlements are raider settlements and you have no vassals, then you could have 30 to 32 raider chests or so active in the game at any one time. With each one having a 5% chance to drop a legendary item every 30 days, that gives you pretty good odds of finding one at at least one of them. Let's check out my other settlements and see how long it takes before we find a legendary item. Now the game says it's a 5% chance that I'm going to get a legendary item. Let's see what that equates to in actual game experience. Yeah, I mean this is pretty much the same. I've got one weapon valued at around 2 to 350 caps, two armor pieces, a variety of chems, and some caps, and a little bit of junk. So these all pretty much have the same thing, and I'm going to loot it all to make sure that I uh, that this thing refills the next time, and uh, the next five days. Nope, not in that one. <laughs> Let's keep looking. Nope. Nope. And Bobkiss. Nope. 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 Nineteen. Oh! And there we go, finally! Hitman's hardened sniper rifle. Ten percent damage while aiming value. 251 so it looks like the legendary effect on the weapon doesn't actually increase the value so the value of the chest is exactly the same well uh so that took me 19 different attempts before i got one to spawn and let's see what did the code say the code said a five percent chance so a ten percent chance would have been one in ten a five percent chance would be one in twenty and I got this on my 19th visit. So that's pretty close. Yeah, that's really close. So that makes a lot of sense. Okay. Down here, the code describes things we already know. Last spawn item day today. And the developer gives us a very helpful note. Sorry, it's not going to be full of goodies right when you build it. And uh, for those of you who have built a tribute chest, you know that as soon as you build it, you don't get anything. You actually have to wait five days. And this line right here reiterates the fact that you do need to loot the chest. And here's a note from the developers. If the chest is full, then your vassals assume that you don't care anymore since you can't be bothered to come get your stuff. So the items in your tribute chest will stay there until you loot them and you will not be getting new items until you loot them. And if you scroll down to the end, tucked between a description about the dice roll that generates a legendary item and the actual generation of the legendary item, we get once every hundred thousand years or so, when the sun doth shine and the moon doth glow and the grass doth grow. Yes, this is the tribute chest. And what I don't understand is they randomly have the word rock right there. Debug trace. Try to spawn legendary item. Rock. Yeah, these guys are rockers. Well, uh, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that is the tribute chest explained. Oh, great. Now I'm full. Uh, the Tribute Chest is a cool little addition to the Raider Outpost Settlements. I would never use it as a practical way of getting legendary items because you only get one every 30 days and the item is no better than any other item that you would get off of a random legendary enemy. You'll get more legendary items faster simply by responding to 
attack defense requests at your settlements or by just clearing dungeons, especially if you're on very hard or survival difficulty. You'll just get a lot more items that way. But it's still a nice little addition and the extra 1,000 caps per day in value every five days, actually, uh, is certainly a bonus. Well, there you go. That is Tribute Chests Deconstructed using the code. I'm going to publish the code on Pastebin or something like that so that you guys can check it out. Let me know if you notice anything else interesting in the code that I missed in this video. And stay tuned. Now that I have access to the creation kit, I'm going to be taking a look at more scripts to try and divine the inner workings behind many of the most frustrating portions of this game. Please subscribe for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.